Hi everyone, Hi. welcome to another video. Today we want to talk about... What do we want to talk about? Catch-up. It's a catch-up. It's not catch-up. Isn't it? No. It's Where's about it? changes. That's what I'm going to call right. the title. Okay. Yeah. So we want to talk about... This is before January. Like, I hate, you know, like when you have a new year, everyone's like, New Year's resolutions. Yeah. I actually feel like you and me, separately, we started thinking about things that we want to change within us or, you know, just different things like that before January came. Yeah. Um, but then I thought, you know what, why do why not talk about this on video? Because, you know, January has come and everyone's got all these different goals, Resolutions, right? yeah. And we want to know yours, so let us know in the comments what your New Year's resolution is. Obviously, we're in February now, but like I said, these changes were... We were thinking about them before the New Year. Yeah. I actually used to try to think about New Year's resolutions, but then I felt like it gives you this pressure, you know? And then, like, if you haven't started when January has started, like, when you're midway January or end of January, you start feeling like, I might as well give up on this. Like, it's a new year, yeah. and I haven't even been able to do these things, you know? So I think sometimes just feeling like, what are you keep smiling about? <laughs> Talk to me, talk to me, look at me. <laughs> it's really confusing because I'm watching you there. I'm like, you're not talking to me, you're talking to the camera. <laughs> right. right, so you want me to talk to you? Yeah, talk to me. I never know what to do, you want to talk, talk to, to me? Talk to me, talk to me, and then we talk to the camera. Am I too far now? Sometimes I feel like with changes, with habits and things that you want to make, that yeah. you shouldn't really put a time frame, like kind of mentally... Be, be aware of the changes that you want to make and mentally take the steps to do it. But don't tell yourself, like, this is for the new year, this is for mm. January or whatnot. And because yeah, everyone, everyone is different. Some people might need that push to say, uh, like, like, yeah, that's true. I want to make a change and this is my catalyst to, make, to, to actually start doing it's something. It's true, it can be, but I also feel like um, people that do that generally, like, don't follow I think through. you're right. Yeah, like, I think you're you right. You know, like a yo-yo diet. I was going to say, yeah, that I think those ones tend to be like, I want to try out something and I want to stick with it, but then it kind of doesn't really follow through. I think the ones that, okay, so the ones, the changes that follow through are when you come to realisation and you're like, hold on, I, I seriously want to make a change and it's not dependent on a date. You're like, oh, I need to make a change. I think as well there's more power in um, realising the change that you want to make and doing it regardless of, like, not the status quo, but sort of, you know, like January and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, this is new, yeah, this is new me, right? Yeah. Then it's just like you're just sort of doing it because you feel like that's what you're supposed to do and everyone's doing it. Yeah. But when, I mean, this when is, it's yeah. sort of something that's internal and quite, it's a lot stronger when it's not a specific day in the year because everyone's doing it, then I feel like it has more strength and you're maybe more... Absolutely. You'll, you'd stick to it more. Because you've come to the conclusion on your own, in your own time, and you're like, right now is the time that I need to make the change. Like, it's come from a deeper down place, mm -hmm. not from something that you're watching other people doing. You're like, this is from within myself. And sometimes, like, there is things, like you said, like a catalyst, like, you know, for example, if, if a man cheats on a girl or if a relationship breaks up, then you see a lot of women tend to, you know, New make, me. Yeah, like that they will get new haircut. Um, that Is that a January will, thing? That, no, no. I'm oh. just saying, like, as you said, serving a catalyst. Yeah, oh, um, okay, yeah. So some yeah, people yeah. will really get in shape. Oh, so, like, like, if something drastic happens in their life, they'll be like, I need to make a change, and you mean mm. like that? But yeah. is that again fleeting because you're basing it around no, somebody else? No, I think else. something something like that is more personal. You know, you see a lot of people that after a breakup, um, if yeah, they gain strength, like, almost sounds like a rebound to me rather than it being like a deep introspective thing where you're like, I'm. Some thinking people about just my need life. that push, and I think that it gives them that strength like instead of sitting there all depressed like someone's cheated on you or oh it's the end of your marriage or something like that it gives you something to focus okay, on so and for me that is still happy and healthier yeah so for me yeah okay interesting but that is still something quite surface level i think when you're 
regardless if you're with someone and you're happy or you're not with someone or you're just broken up like this other kind of change is different which is like you're regardless of your situation you're just thinking to yourself like what improvements do I want to make to myself there's no you're not watching anybody else what they're doing you're just in your own head and like you know what it's about time that I feel like I should try something new or change something and I think it's really important like to think about self-change and to reflect and to think about you know to constantly be growing it's just something that I find it should be natural almost like yeah and so I get quite surprised sometimes when there's people who just cruise through their life and they're the same. Like they will, some, some people are even oblivious, they don't think and reflect about how they are or their character traits. Or yeah, things I wonder that if they, that's the majority or is, is things that... Things that they should improve on. Like there's some people who, you know, you just know for years and they're bad things, like they... They are either they unaware, settle. They settle they're unaware it. or they're aware, but they just don't want to change. So I think that's, okay, so I think that starts with, one of my main foundations is always try your best. Yeah, and if that's with a task, if that's with like you got guests, you got anything, always try your best. And then eventually that comes around to, well, why aren't I trying my best in my own self, you know, like for my own improvement? And I think we're, you know, like with the cruising thing, I think those people don't think, I need to try my best for this, I need to try my best for that. I don't think that type of thinking occurs there. Is it a personality thing, I wonder, or is it just that some people don't have the drive or the motivation, or some people lack, you know, the ability to contemplate and reflect and to think of... To think within themselves, oh, I don't really like the way that I do this, or I think I should change that, or you know what I mean? I've always been a very complicated person, and I've always lived in my own head. Mm. And so there's always been like thoughts going around, and you know, this or that. And so I can't <clears throat> relate to not being able to, not being able, yeah. So, but I, ca- but I have seen that what you're describing people yeah. that just cruise and uh, pay no mind and sometimes they're actually aware but, like, but they enjoy don't enjoy it almost yeah it's a weird thing where it's like yeah i agree that that person shouldn't do that and that person shouldn't do that but they do it themselves yeah like, i it's, find it's, that it's, really odd when yeah when someone can advise someone or um talk about points like that this person does this and i don't like that and they do the same thing but e- either they're just in denial or, like I said, they can't reflect, or mm. they're happy with just being comfortable and, and cruising and sitting. I don't yeah. know if it, if, maybe it takes an effort, I think, as well, and some people just don't want to put that effort in. I think it does take effort and a level of discipline. Yeah, to, that's true, discipline. Yeah, to be able to, you know, follow through with things and say, and if you don't have the discipline, you're going to be lazy about, you know, uh, well, I can't do it. I can't. I don't have the I energy. I think it's I holding, yeah, yeah, yeah. You holding yourself accountable. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what it is. Because, yeah, I think. I, I, I just really believe in trying your best. Um, there's two things, yeah, that are important to me, which is always trying your best. And if you're going to try to understand something, understand something from the foundation. Once you've got a solid foundation, then you build upon that. And you can understand better how things work, you know, and that's with everything. I think as well that, like, we have our religion and that means a lot to us. Islam means a lot to us, right? And as Muslims, like, you have a clear vision, you know, what you're in this life for, what happens after you die. Like, so you constantly, you know, you you have to think about your character. And Islam, character is a massive thing. Yeah. It's an yeah. absolutely massive thing. So, you know, trying to perfect your character is also part of Islam. Yeah. And questioning, constantly thinking about how you are, how you act towards people, to, to the world, to nature, to all of these kind of things is also part of Islam and, and is really the fundamentals that I think a lot of people don't, don't consider. You know, yeah. they might just think it's a religion of praying, fasting, reading the Holy Book or whatnot, but it's like... Your character is literally such a big... Yeah, so one of the biggest things in our religion is also manners. 
Yeah, that's, that's what I'm yeah. saying, character. And so I think having your religion, having Islam, if you're doing it the proper way, is what, what is at the root and the heart for us to constantly be thinking, how could I better myself? How could I improve myself? Yeah. Am I being fair? Do I treat people the way that I should yeah. be treating? Because we have a guideline with religion as well. Like we have everything: yeah. how you should talk to people, how you should interact with people, how you should be kind to animals. But how you but should you should be. also be kind to yourself. Like within that, you have to be fair to yourself too. I think some people can take it too far and be like, I want to, I want to better myself. But they go to an extreme where they become tough on themselves. That is yeah. not a, a a thing that is sustainable, and it also puts off people around you. you yeah, know? you have to be gentle with everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think gentleness is a really nice thing. But I think regardless of religion, right? Like you should always strive. Like people. Yeah, that yeah, don't yeah. Believe regardless in God of religion, yeah, yeah, yeah. This you know, this is a good. and evolving is is really part of the essence of life. I feel. Yeah, it's a good human characteristic to strive to improve oneself and I think um, it makes life more simple you know when you can yourself reflect on on how you are because say for example if you don't reflect then you're gonna have problems with your spouse you're gonna have problems with friends with family because yeah. if you aren't working on improving these things within you people around you could find it quite difficult to deal yeah. with yeah yeah and you know, so that, that that's why it's important because people sometimes they can't tell you because they don't want to offend you or upset you. And then some people, if they do tell you... Get offended? Yeah, like, or, or just so they don't take it on board. Yeah. Or don't believe it, they're in denial or they get defensive. So the best thing is to look inside yourself. Yeah, really, yeah. M most to, change. I mean, sometimes when someone tells you something, it can you know, plant a seed and then you look, you reflect, you, you'll be defensive in the moment, yeah. but then afterwards you'll reflect on it and you'll be like, hmm, okay, I'll yeah. look into this, you know. And I think it's good sometimes, like if the person says it in a respectable way, mm. to be open to getting that kind of feedback because it saves you sometimes if you cannot see. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing that someone can hold up the mirror sometimes and show you something Yeah, I think that's probably that why also, like in our religion, it's... I don't like giving advice, mm -hmm. but in our religion, it's like, it is commendable to give advice. In a nice, respectable, in a nice respectable way. And in private, but I like think, not to humiliate. Yeah, I think the reason why it's, um, it's probably commendable, when you're in, telling someone to improve and do good, yeah, but I think the other thing is also, because dependent on the person, um, you know, like, it's a hard thing to do. Because you are in a position where you feel like, I, uh, I don't want to overstep my bounds. I don't want to, you know, you're like, uh, I feel like I should help this person. I, it seems like I'm meant to, but I don't want to get caught up and have a di disagreement. And, mm. argue. you know, so me, I, I avoid. I would but, be very you know, avoidant that, of that. That's one thing that I'm, I feel like I'm quite different to a lot of people around me, is that I feel like I, as long as it's said nicely, yeah, mm. And I like to sort of know if there's something that I could improve on. Like sometimes I will say to you, right, even I will ask you, I remember a few times I've asked you, like, what do you think my strengths are? What do you think my weaknesses are? You know, and I've gotten them written upstairs, like in a notebook as well, you know. I, I like to... <laughs> I yeah, questions. they're a bit dangerous for you, but... <laughs> But, you know, you're lovely, I, I like... you're great. <laughs> yeah, you've said great twice. Is there else? <laughs> and then the list of downs are like so easy to cop with. <laughs> There's none. There's none. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my point now. What was I saying? I've forgotten. <laughs> I think, oh yeah, it's, it's also about love and care like when you give someone advice or you want to tell them like look yeah. hey i think you need to change this i think you need to do this differently maybe you should consider this mm. really ultimately you're telling them for the ben benefit of themselves so you know like i said as long as it's done nicely yeah anyhow so i think that's a good intro i feel like there was a few points that came in my head like they come in two seconds and yeah. go out like, <laughs> I felt like there were some points that I really wanted to make and I've forgotten. But, yeah, let's get into what are your goals or your changes? 
Um, what have you reflected on and felt like, you know, you want to change or improve? So I, for for a long time, I've been like trying to self improve and kind of. So it started off. Let me go back, which is um, we, you, you know, we grew up with the news, you know, and the news is during two thousand and one onwards to two thousand and maybe fifteen. Mm. Think of that, fourteen years. Uh, I was hooked on the news. I remember that. You know. Um, I used to just tell you stop looking at the news. Yeah. Because it yeah. would be the, like it wouldn't even be the first thing you do in the morning. It would be throughout the day. Oh yeah. Like, you'd be constantly ref- like. Looking. Yeah, yeah. That it was a a habit. You know, I'd be checking BBC. I'd be checking this. I'd be checking all sorts. And um, you know, news is never good, is it? It's always filled with um, this thing's happened in this country and that thing's happened in that country and this military's gone here and that's gone there. You know, all sorts of that really just dark stuff. So I made the decision um, to stop, like, to stop watching, like, news. And, um, you know, like, I keep myself informed, but when there's things that are morbid or anything like that, I tend to avoid it, Mm. you know? And I don't like talking about it either. So anyway, so... I made the, uh, so I stopped reading the news, uh, like that dark stuff. Um, I was still reading financial news and all that kind of stuff, but, um, and I stopped watching, I stopped playing computer games where you kill people, where you're shooting and stuff like that. And I stopped watching movies where there's like a lot of killing. And what I found was that um, my, my, my heart, got a lot softer over time and so what happened was that my I was desensitized to when you're watching the news and you see like bodies and stuff you know you're desensitized oh just another body just another this just another that it wasn't just that though was it It was how it was making you feel like quite (laughs) anxious depressed sort of like what's the future oh yeah so now I, I mean I have to say that I've completely forgotten how it used to make me feel but I know that it was um quite a negative feeling you know because it's it is something that makes you feel anxious and it makes you feel like oh the world is in such dire straits you know but anyway so what happened was that um my heart started getting softer and um you know like then if by chance I was uh I saw something you know on the news you know like you know negative like that um I found that I I found it more distressing in the sense that I I can't watch, I can't read that, you know, you feel more empathy, you're less desensitised and you're just like, I, I can't see that poor, these poor people or this poor animal or this poor that, you know? And uh, whilst that might sound like, oh, I don't want to be like that, what happens is that you your empathy increases, your love increases, and your ability to connect with people increases. So I found that, was so important and I feel like I'm talking forever ever now like I've got more stuff to say so I carry on yeah so yeah that was a huge huge thing and um I don't there's no regrets there like that's my life now like I really um I'm not keen of on watching even movies where like you know there's killing I think um there's a balance to be had which is like sometimes with historical fact and stuff but you know there's there's a level where you like when something's like too much you feel it and you're like let me look away I don't need to input this into myself I don't need to have this part of my being you know um so that's something that's really completely changed the other thing that I did was I deleted, I've never used Instagram and uh, I started using TikTok a little bit and then I was like, oh, deleted TikTok, I don't like TikTok. And um, Facebook, I deleted Facebook. Um, uh, I So here's the thing with Facebook, right, is like um, I was re- getting my news on Facebook and then sometimes there'd be a topic that would interest me um, and I'd write a comment on there. I'm I'm not negative or anything, but I'd write. And but you'll see that you're open to the world, and you'll get a negative reply. And you know, 
it's it's just such an unnatural thing, mm. you know. And then you reply to that person, and you'll be checking it yeah, throughout the day. Yeah, I remember that. Like your face, like if you have your laptop open or something, it would have like notifications of all these. Yeah. I'm like, why do you do that? Or, yeah. What is the point? What do you feel like? Yeah. You're not and teaching the, and the other thing was be would be even on the positive, you know. So for example, if I write a, a funny comment or something like that, yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, people like that, and they pretty like, 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 but. What does that even matter? You know, like, yeah, and you're checking it, you know. Anyway, so I got rid of Fa Oh, my God. I'm so pleased I got rid of Facebook. Um, I, you just, you, you suddenly feel like I'm connected to the world again, which yeah. is bizarre because these apps are meant to make you feel like you're connected to the world, whereas you're not supposed to be connected to the whole world. You're supposed to be connected to the world around you. The change that I've made is that... Um, so I've stopped driving as much now locally yeah. and I bought myself a big trolley and it looks at, oh they've seen it on the other channel oh on this channel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The red, I called it the red wagon yeah well it is a wagon it is a wagon a cart wagon um anyway so I've stopped driving as much there's so much traffic with driving and stuff and I really like um I like walking doing whatever I need to do, you know, my shopping or dropping things off and, you know, different things like that. And along the way, as I'm walking, I've made so many friends, you know, I smile at people, you talk it's to like, people. It's like, you know, Postman Pat, like, you know, yeah. the, the guy that's in the neighbourhood and everyone's like... Now... Especially because he's got the big, massive yeah, red wagon. Yeah, and now I trolley. open a door and more often than not, someone's walking past and they say hi to me because they know me from some yeah. you know walking around or something and and you know like this actual real human interaction where there's like literally two souls involved yeah, yeah. it's not like typing on a screen there's eyes there's a smile there's a heart there's a soul and they smile at you you smile back and you feel good and it's clean as well so yeah. Like yeah 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 and and you actually feel good this is another thing i noticed is that smiling at people is good, yes, very good. But if you see someone that's miserable and um, you smile at them, now 10 other people smile at them, I bet you, before long, that person who's walking around grumpy will learn to s smile a little bit, smile a little bit at someone as they're walking past. And that, you know, it's a big thing. That's why I like it's a smiling in Islam as yeah. well. Even a smile, see, this is what I like there. You know, the beauty of Islam yeah. really is like even a smile is, is talked about. It says you know, smile, a smile is charity. charity. But I honestly, I, as I've started walking it around like locally, I've realised the importance of that because when I, I, a lot of people don't smile. Yeah. And when I smile at people, a lot of people smile back, um, but some people don't. But I realise that, you know what, you s keep smiling. Yeah. And if somebody else, you know, picks up on that kind of, you know, smile at people, say hi or whatever, they will lighten up in their heart a little bit. Yeah. And that's a good thing for the world. It's like when, um, you know, again, in a sermon, you're supposed to give greetings, right, of peace. Yeah, yeah. So when you see someone, you say, you say peace be upon you. Yeah. And I think that's so beautiful anyway. I would like to be able to say that. that to yeah. someone. I would, you know, even in English, I'd like to be able to say that to people because... You're not just saying hi, which doesn't really have a meaning. Yeah, like, hi is just like what's. Someone. It's not even what's up. Hi is just an, a noise that is like, you're there, I'm here. Yeah. Peace be upon you. There's a meaning there. You know, like, I want you to have a nice day. Yeah. I want you to be serene. I want you to have tranquility. I want you to be calm. You know? It's a forgotten sunnah, which is like a practice of the Prophet. Yeah. And you're meant to do that. So I, when I do that, people get surprised. You know, yeah. like when I say yeah. I smile, I say peace be upon you to them. They're like, yeah. And then yeah. they don't. They almost don't know what to say or do. You know, some people they don't reply. They don't yeah. even look at me. Yeah. And some people they like smile. And then some people kind of forget what you're supposed to say back yeah. even. But I won't. It's not just to Muslims. I'd like to say it to everyone that I come. Yeah, by. it's just that it's a bit weird, right? To like non-Muslims, but peace be upon you. Like, yeah. What you coming out of the saying, Bible? Yeah, but that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Is like it seems weird. Yeah, but it's it's a, actually it's such a nice thing, you know. Like it is a nice thing. I've lived here for 11 years. I've dressed in a way where 
you know, I was, that's how what I was at that time. It's just like uh, someone who identified as being a uh, British Muslim, but quite British. And I still identify as that. But I've recently become more comfortable in my own self. I go out, out now, so I basically fell in love with um, Arab clothes. Um, I find them to be... It's like a long dress. Yeah. It's not the ones that are like quarter length with a slit. You might have seen that's like what Pakistanis wear. Yeah. And what they're called, shawar. Shawar kameez, kameez per Yeah, know. but the thobe, which is in Arabic, is like... Let's just it's call a long, it a long dress. It's a long, you know, some people call it dish dasha. It's kind of know, like, so. like what I'm wearing, but this is abaya or jilbab. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so it's a, it's a long garment. They actually look really nice in yeah. those ones. And you, you've probably seen them, all the Arabs wear them in Saudi and different places like he's that. He's been wearing it in the latest videos that he's been getting out yeah. of his own. So, <laughs> Even the little hat thing. Yeah. So, yeah, first of all, I find it very comf comfortable. Um... You know, I wear my normal Western clothes underneath it, yeah? I hate saying Western clothes. My, let me just say my normal clothes. Trousers. My trousers and stuff, yeah. And so I um, I put my soap... It makes... One, it's very warm, you know. Um, the, the way I started wearing this, yeah, was I approached it from a scientific perspective. Yeah, so I took a scientific approach to basically... So in... Obviously, we had the cost of living stuff, right? And when you go out and stuff and, you know, go to the garage... Wait, what's the cost of living got to do with the film? I'll get to it. Oh. I'll get to it. <laughs> Scientific approach. Yeah, so... I thought it was just about keeping the heat in. Yeah, the, okay, yeah, but cost of... Yeah, because, you know, you turn the heat down. I'm oh, trying to, I'm okay. trying to regulate I myself. I thought you meant, like, so that it's a uniform and you don't have to, like, change and wash... No, 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 no. <laughs> the, ew! If you think about it, yeah, is um, scientifically... You're creating a layer of air between you, which is insulation from the outside. So when you're wearing the thobe, the cold air hits the front, and you've got a layer of warm air inside the thobe. So you are way more insulated um, than uh, when you're just wearing trousers. Mm. Uh, because I've tested it out. You'll feel the cold hit your, hit your shins and hit your knees. But when I'm wearing the thobe, it's a constant temperature. And so I found that, well, I haven't worn it whilst it's hot yet, but whilst it's cold, it's been brilliant. It's been really good. And I've been able to maintain just a, a nice constant temperature. And I also feel now like when I don't wear the thobe, even though I'm wearing trousers, yeah, <laughs> I feel so uncovered, you know? <laughs> it's weird. But I don't feel comfortable not wearing it now. I feel like... I feel like it just, you know, it covers me, you know, in a way that I feel happy, you know, like I just feel like, I know people talk about modesty and they always talk about women and modesty, you know, um, I feel I need to be modest too, you know. Yeah, you're supposed to have modesty yeah. islamically as well. But anyway, I like it because I just feel so comfortable, you know. <laughs> no one bats an eye when I go out. That was the catalyst for you know, reaching this point, you know, and everything you have to do in stages. You can't jump to all the way down there if you haven't done the beginning stuff. The next one, obviously, I went to my first big Arab wedding. Mm. Yeah. And um, that, that changed me in a way. Um, made me fall in love with some aspects of Arab culture, Yemeni culture. And it made me more open to, I don't know, it did, it, there was some trigger within there that I can't explain. There's some blessings in it or something, I'm not sure. After that, I started feeling like, um, I, I want to go to the mosque to pray, mm. you know. And so I knew that it's, it's going to be hard, um, but I know within myself that for me to form a habit, uh, I need to do something for seven days consecutively and start with the small thing, just the one. And so I did that. Generally, and then, habits are supposed to take 30 days, is it? I have no idea. I think it's 30 days. I have no idea. But for me, you know, I you, you learn your how your own mind works, you know, and you're just like, you know. 
So I started off with, with um, just going to the early morning prayer um because i felt like that one's significant and then i yeah um and then i started going to the evening prayer maghrib which is uh, the uh, after, after sunset. sunset after sunset um because i felt like that one's significant and then just recently i've just you know as time's go i don't know how many days i've been going now um but now i feel like I really, it's, it's a highlight of my day when I go. I really like it um, because it feels like I've, so you've, you've got your you worldly life your where, you're work, where you're working for money and this and this and that and doing That's different things. That's the purpose things. of prayer, to connect you back to God and yeah. the afterlife and remembering your purpose. But even without thinking, Just you know, I, when I go to the mosque and I do my prayer, I come back, I feel like I've completed something that I was meant to complete. It's like some sort of duty that I didn't really pay mind to before. Um, but it really feels like I've done that and it tick on the box and good job, you know. Um, it really feels like something quite good. Um, and it makes you feel calm and at peace. Mm. And uh, that's why it's one of my highlights of the days. And if I miss miss it at the mosque, I'm like, damn, I'll go to the next one. You know, I'll have to wait to the next one, you know. Well, this is another thing with change is that it's, it's down to the person when. Because we live cl close to the mosque and mm -hmm. I always wanted it to go. And I was yeah. like, you know, but like it was like a time and a place sort of mm. thing. You know, and the person has to be like ready and like within their routine and make sense of it and yeah. want to implement it themselves. Yeah. And so stuff. that's everything has to be at the right time. Because so I say it's so nice and I would like to go I, and I it's peaceful and you don't know what blessings it would get yeah. and now so, you're seeing it all. And then he set up his watch as well. And then, yeah, so I set up my watch to vibrate before. So if I'm in the middle of something and it vibrates, then I can just be like, right, I've got to go to the mosque. And uh, there's no stress in my head where I have to keep an eye on the time and stuff. Now I've also started going to the night prayer. So you've got the morning. I think that's so nice to start, to start and end the day, you know. Yeah, to yeah. the last prayer and the first exactly. prayer at the mass. Exactly, exactly. And uh, it just feels, it feels right and like you're doing... It, Men I are can, supposed to pray in the mosque. Women yeah. don't have to. The connection of people between each other uh, the connection of people in prayer, praying to in one direction, you know, like um, all around the world. From there, I've also started like um, thinking like uh, I want to learn Arabic. Do you feel like how do you feel like it's improved your life, changed your life? What do you see, for example, going to the mosque? Do you feel like it's brought about you know blessings? In the house or... You know? Yeah, so I feel like peaceful, calmer, more serene, um, like I'm doing my duty, like I'm not letting myself down. I'm working for this life, but I'm also like, you know, doing something for, you know, what we believe is, you know, heaven. You don't want to be winning in this life and losing in the next, um, or losing in this life and also losing in the next. You want to feel, to feel happy, you want to feel like you're balancing, both. balancing and doing your best. And I don't think I was doing my best in, on the religious front. So I've been religious in the way of like kindness and, and um, manners and, you know, observing the rules of the religion. But, you know, in terms of like going to the mosque, you know, for the five daily prayers, I've been, I was doing them at home. But going to the mosque is something else. Because, we believe you know, in Islam that there's like angels there, it's a house of God, like mosques, you know what I mean? Yeah. People are remembering God there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's going to be, of course, going to be different to at home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really weird because you just feel lighter. Um, there's less negative negative feeling That's what inside. I, wish I, could go, I just feel but it's way just like. A male's no, it's not just about going to the mosque. Like when you go to the mosque and you do your prayer and you come back, your day's better, mm. you know, you're lighter, there's less negativity. You could, you can also be more aware and say... That's the purpose of the prayers, is, is to do that, that's why it's five allocated throughout the day. Yeah. 
Because when you actually connect and pray like you're supposed to... It grounds you or something. It does. It gives you peace and strength and it just it reminds you. It's just like a, it serves a purpose to you. Yeah. you know, it's not just to obey God or to worship yeah. God. But I don't, I don't actually, want to just put it down on this physical plane either. I want people to know without going into too much detail that there is something more spiritual to it. There's something else to it. And uh, it touches you and your life in a way that really benefits you. Christianity as a religion is incredibly important because before Islam, there's obviously Christianity, and before Christianity, there's Judaism. It's the foundation. Abraham was the foundation. In the Bible, there was the mention of the next prophet coming, and that was Muhammad. Uh, peace be upon him, and peace be upon all the prophets. But I do want to say to those. Muslims who are watching us that don't do their five prayers, that it really, really like is it might get hard. It might be hard to get into the habit of doing it, especially because you know the same age is just go go go. And we have so many distractions like on your phone and you know just all this information and time just goes really quick. That really, really try. And it might be hard at the beginning, but once you get into the habit, yeah. it will become easy. And you will see how it will affect your life, yeah. this life, not just the afterlife, but this life. You start to see like so many blessings. Like then going to the mosque is a different story. That's a different thing. I'm pretty happy now. But you do. I'm, I'm, I would. And if happiness isn't the, is the key, you know, like, isn't that what you're after? But right. do baby steps, you know, you don't just yeah, like run yeah. to the mosque. So I did baby that. steps, as I explained. You know, start you know, doing I, start, your, I did one. I start did one. doing one prayer, start doing two prayers, start doing the prayers, five prayers in a day, start doing them on time, and then you can think about going to the mosque. But truly, you know, we have, like it really will make you more yeah. at peace. It will make you just more yeah. like able to deal with, with things, you know. And but my journey, I feel like, is my journey right now. Like, as in, I don't know if what I'm doing and what I'm going through at the moment is ev what everyone would experience. I think everyone... No, of course it. everyone has different journeys and embarks, you know, different times and has different things that they realise, mm. right? But it's, you know, we could still sort of advise, like, that I'll try, try to do your prayers because... You know, you're reaping the benefits in this world and the next. One of the most powerful things you can do, Muslim, not Muslim, whatever, is a request from God, which is to say to God, uh, God, give me, give me guidance, and to say it sincer sincerely. If you're feeling like lost or something, yeah, if you, feel if lost, you ask really that good. question, you're going to go on a journey. <laughs> At the time, it'll be like, what? You know, and but afterwards you'll be like, I so badly needed that. You'll see. Th and it's you'll like an, uh, I don't know how to explain it. When if you ask something like that and you and something does change in your life, I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like a gentle, like you feel like God is with you, like pushing you along this path. Yes. Yeah. And you can feel it, yeah. like you feel like, oh my God, like this is not my doing. Yeah. This has just come out of nowhere and I'm literally just following. Yes. I've submitted myself to the feeling that you're not in control. Um, God's in control. And you just, you're just along for the ride, you know, just go with what happens. Yeah, like, I don't want to get too, like, spiritual and all that on people but people were like too spiritual like what are you talking about of course this has been too spiritual yeah but how, how much deeper do you want to go i think it's important look if you're if you're not muslim and you're christian maybe maybe look at the church maybe open up the church maybe see what your religion's about um, if you're if you're not practicing Jew, same for muslims uh, or yeah. for any religion really like yeah. You know, I think a lot of people are just born into things or they're just sort of like Muslim or Christian by name, but it's like, what, wait, think about what in, your faith in, actually... In my perspective and, you know, from our religion, Christians and Jews, you know, Abrahamic faiths, you're, you're, you're believers in God. You, 
is you know how people say non-Muslim or disbeliever or something like that. No, Christians and Jews and Muslims are all believers in one God. And that's the essence of faith. It's kind of funny is that when people are in life and death situations, they call upon God. It's just what, a natural... What else do you have? It's the natural thing, isn't it? And then you realise that life is f actually fleeting and there must be something. And, you know, if you're out there, can I have some help? You know? This it's is not preaching like, you know, we're not like that, honestly. We, we just like to talk about our journeys, our life, our experiences, our feelings, yeah. our thoughts, our opinions. There's, there, it, we say there's no compulsion in religion. And, you know, like, if, if God says something to me in, in, in the Quran, says no well, then there is no compulsion in religion. I'm just talking, you know, like about myself, like yeah, as in so this, if I was to hide that, you know, that I wear this and I'm embarrassed of wearing this, no, I'm just being myself, I'm being fully open because I think I, I think people appreciate you actually being your honest and open self rather than pretending to be something else. Yeah. You know, before if I wore this, maybe two years ago, I've been pretending to be something else. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is me, right now, you know? It doesn't hold a religious value. No, 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 but I'm saying that I'm being my full self, you know. And, You're just saying that you have taken and, to this and you embrace yeah. it, you like it now. And I, I'm, not preach, I'm not preaching to people, I'm saying that uh, this is my life right now, and this is what I enjoy doing, and this is what's made me happy. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to copy me. Uh, you don't. Um, yeah, we're just talking about yeah, that. Yeah, our experiences. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, this is what I enjoy right now. And being at peace and trying. I think people can feel it. You know, you, it makes you more approachable. People smile. People smile at you more, and you just feel. You just feel lighter. You just feel so much lighter. So I was gonna say my changes, but you know what, like. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna say in the comments. He didn't let her speak. He no, spoke for the honest. world. I quite enjoy just listening to you because you don't really always share all these kind of things, like top secret. Yeah, because my journey is like my my journey. Yeah, but and like it's still, I you know I'm quite a deep person and I like these kind of discussions and thoughts and you know knowing where your head is at and your journey. Like these things that they mean a lot to me. So you need to not care about being the man, and uh, you need to just be humble and realize you don't need expense of this and you don't need to show off and you don't need to show off to your wife either you have to be humble within your own self depends what wife you've got you, you need to be humble within your own self and you start feeling more grounded and don't listen to these like uh you got to be the man thing and the hustle and make, no it's that's getting you more into worldly life and uh, more unhappiness and more slavery to debt and more slavery to money you you, yes, you want to earn money, but you want to be happy, you want to be comfortable, you want to be happy in this life, you want to be happy for you, if you're religious for, you know, what you do next and everything like that. For a man that will help you grow and make you open up to listening to other people's wisdom and other people's, you know, ups and downs and stuff and actually not thinking, no, I know what I'm doing and I'll do things my way and, you know, like... You no, know, you, you open your heart up, you be humble, things change. If you're happy, if, if you That's can... It, no, no, no. If you, if you can be happy now... This should have been a Noah. No, no, no. If you, can, sorry, if you can be happy now, right, why would you say, no, I need to earn millions and be happy in 20 years, and you don't even know if that's coming? I didn't. I, this is my advice. All right, don't don't laugh at this as yours. How many times did I? Tell yeah, but you? I'm living it. I'm living it. You're yeah. saying it. I'm living it. I've always been simple. I've always said to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I'm talking about man ego. Okay, but I always said to you, yeah. You work. You're thinking about the future so much. Who knows if we'll even be there? We're not living in the present. Didn't I always say that to you? That you're just like. Yeah, but part of humility is to like listen and. That time I was trying to be the man. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I've got all this on camera. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm going to reference it back like, this was your own words. But yalla, let's yeah. end it then, yeah? You done? Yeah. <laughs> all right then.
that's all of Noah's advice for today. It wasn't meant to be advice. All of Noah's wisdom. Oh, for God's sake. It wasn't even that. This title should I was just be talking about Noah Talks instead of... <laughs> it's Noah Talks. That's the Arabic version, by the way. It's so different. Noah and Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, why do you make it like this? Make it like what? I'm about to sign off now. Go it's on. not advice, it was just me talking about what I'm up to. Yeah, alright. I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sound so boring! <laughs> <laughs> alright, bye. Peace be upon you all. I said it. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed his lecture. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Take care. So Come on, you made me feel like it's so silly now. Why? Me trying to act like, oh, I know so much about the world and life. I didn't say that. Yeah, but I feel like that now. Not because of you, because of my own self. No, it's not like that at all. People are going to appreciate it. Because, you know, oh not, my God. you don't get to, you don't always get that insight until Look at this guy who thinks he's got it all figured out. Right, bye everyone. <laughs>